Today's lab is called the Current Balance Lab, and essentially that amounts to uh, sticking a wire in a magnetic field, measuring the force, the magnetic force that's acting on that wire due to the magnetic field. And then from that, ultimately, we're going to calculate the magnetic field strength that we used to apply that force. And we're going to do that by plotting a couple graphs. You'll see uh, the details of that as we go through this. There's two parts to this lab, and you can see that on the handout that I texted to you a few minutes ago. The first part, the first part is to see how the uh, current, the electric current that goes through the wire, affects the magnetic force. The apparatus that you're going to use is going to look exactly like what you see up on the board right now and exactly like what you see on your phone right now. There's a power supply right here. That power supply is hooked up to a couple wires, one black wire, one red wire, as you can see, which are in turn connected to this apparatus that we call a current balance apparatus. Connected to this end of this current balance apparatus is a little cartridge. This little cartridge can come in and out. That changes the length of the wire. Okay, in the first activity, though, in the first part of this activity, you're going to keep the length of the wire constant. There are multiple lengths. You want to pick the longest one for, for part one. Pick the longest wire, stick it in there, okay, and go with it. Now, the way this is going to work, guys, is when you flip on the power supply, you're going to get an electric current going through the battery here, from the battery or from the power supply, through the wire into one arm of this current balance apparatus, then through this cartridge, which is effectively the length of the wire, and then back through here and back around back to the power supply. This cartridge, which is the wire, is going to be... Uh, threaded down very carefully in between these horseshoe magnets. Make sure that it's parallel to the magnets. Make sure that it's not touching the magnets, but make sure that it's in between the magnets. And you'll see exactly what I mean when you see the apparatus in person. This set of magnets, this set of horseshoe magnets, is on a scale. The purpose of that is to measure the magnetic force. Now, how are we going to measure the magnetic force from a scale? When I turn on the current here, Okay, that, that means there's going to be a magnetic field generated by the wire that's in between that magnetic field. Okay. Now, there's a magnetic field there. That's going to cause an interaction between those two magnetic fields. The field that was caused by the wire, the field that was already there. Okay, field number one, the field that was already there, and field number two, the one that was caused by the wire. That's going to cause a force on the wire. But by Newton's third law, if the, if the um, magnets apply a force on the wire, the wire will apply an equal and opposite force on the magnets. The magnets are going to be pushed down as a result of that force. And that's going to trick the scale into thinking it's heavier. So what you're going to get is a reading on the scale that wasn't there before because the magnets are being pushed down by the wire. They're not touching the wire, but there's a magnetic force pushing those magnets down. What you want to do is record the mass on that scale. It's not a real mass, right? Okay, it's a, it's a trick mass, right? The, the scale is tricked into thinking there's more mass. But you're going to record that mass and essentially multiply that mass by 9.81, convert it to kilograms, multiply it by 9.81 to get your magnetic force. So, easy to get the length of the wire. It's just the length of the wire that's on this little printed card here that can be pulled in and out this cartridge, and it's printed right on there. It tells you the length of the wire. It's easy to get the electric current. You're just going to simply read that off of the power supply. And it's now easy to get the magnetic force, although you are going to have to do a couple steps for that. One, read the so-called mass, and two, convert that mass to newtons by multiplying it by 9.81. So, first part, you're going to keep the length of the wire. You're going to keep you're going to keep this part of it constant. You're not going to change that through the first part of the experiment. What you're going to change in the first part of the experiment is the electric current. The electric current over here. Keep the length of the wire constant. Uh, change the electric current. Okay, as I said before, okay, a little bit of a blown up version of it here. Place the wire in the center of the magnetic field. Make sure it's not touching. Make sure it's in the magnetic field, but make sure it's not touching. And when you've got that done, Notice the reading on the scale right now? How's it reading zero if I've got a, a magnet sitting on top of it? Yeah, you zero it. There's a little zero button or a tear button here that you press once everything's set up. 
You want to turn the voltage knob on the power supply as far to the right as it will go. Okay, that's the top knob right here. Turn it as far to the right as it will go. The current knob is far to the left as it will go. Okay, that should read zero and zero on both sides of that power supply. Once you're ready to go and you've turned this thing on, you're going to adjust the current knob very, very slowly on the power supply until you get a higher value of current. Okay, maybe it reads 0.1 amps. Great. Whatever it reads, write it down. Okay, write it down right here. And then record the value of the mass reading on the scale that corresponds to that. Hey, it's still the same mass, right? It's still the same mass, but we've tricked it into thinking it's 0.29 grams heavier because we're pushing down on the magnets as a result of that magnetic force. Um, change the value of the current. Turn it up a little bit. And get the corresponding mass. Change the value of the current again, and so on, and so on, and so on. Make sure you record the length of the wire as well. That's important. It becomes really important later on. But it's going to stay the same throughout this whole thing. One word of caution here as you're doing this one. Don't go over two. Don't go over two amps. Okay? So if you happen to, by trial six, be up to 1.9 amps, that's okay. You can always go backwards and use something that you haven't used in between. They don't have to be in order. I just don't want you to go over 2 amps, okay, even if you do get to 1.9 amps by trial number 6. Make sense? Yep. Yes. You have to do all 10 trials. Part 2 is going to be set up almost exactly the same way, except this time you're going to keep the current the same. Remember the last time you kept the length of the wire the same? You picked the longest wire. This time you're going to keep the current the same. And my suggestion is to use about one amp. It doesn't have to be exactly. Okay, if you're trying to fine tune this, this power supply to get exactly one amp, and it just doesn't seem to want to go to one amp, but you can get it stuck on 0.97 amps, that's fine. 1.3 amps, that's fine. I'm suggesting about one amp. Just make sure you record what exactly you're using. These are the cartridges that we, that we uh, take out and, and put back in here. Okay, again, you want to use the longest one for trial one or for experiment one, but for experiment two, you're going to switch them. Okay, you're going to put the longest one in, in the center of the magnetic field first, turn on the power supply, and then you're going to measure, um, write down the length, the amount of current that you used, one amp or close to that, write down the length of the wire that you used, Okay? And then you're going to record the mass that corresponds to that. Then you're going to switch it. Then you're going to keep the current the same, but you're going to switch the length of the wire. Put in another length of wire, corresponding mass, and so on. There's a reason why there's only six trials for part two, because we only have six different lengths of wire. So you're going to do a total of 16 trials, 10 different currents, and then six different lengths of wire. Your analysis is, at least the tables in your analysis, uh, not going to be crazy hard. Okay? For part one, for experiment one, you're just essentially recopying your data table, the current and the mass, and then for the magnetic force, you're just taking the mass and multiplying it by 9.81. Just make sure you're in kilograms when you do that. Same deal for experiment two. Just basically your data table, and then a third column, which is your mass in kilograms times 9.81. And you can do that all by hand, or because you've got to plot graphs here, and you're going to see that in just a second, if you want, put all that stuff in a spreadsheet and just have the spreadsheet calculate magnetic force for you. That works too. Whatever you want to do. Two graphs that you're going to plot here. First graph is force versus current. That's going to be pretty close to a straight line. You're going to plot that graph on Google Sheets, and you're going to have that equation displayed on Google Sheets. It's going to say y is equal to 0.37x plus 0.003 or something to that effect. Okay, that's y equals mx plus b. Then you're going to take, once you have the value of the slope, you're going to use the value of that slope to figure out what the magnetic field strength is of those, of those horseshoe magnets. You're going to do that by using a technique that we learned uh, earlier this year for one of our other labs. The equation for any straight line graph is y equals mx plus b. You will find in this case that the y-intercept is zero, or essentially zero. It may be 0 0.00045, whatever, but it's effectively zero. 
what I want you to do is replace the y-axis with whatever appears on the y-axis. So y variable is force. M, the slope is, we're going to write the word slope so we don't get it mixed up with mass. And then x-axis is current. Now I want you to come up with an equation that looks something like that. What equation has F and I in it that's relevant to this, that is? It's got F in it, it's got I in it, and it's relevant to a wire in a magnetic field. Yep. Good. F is equal to ILB. Cross off what appears in both. F appears in both. I appears in both. That leaves us with slope in the first one and LB in the second one. That means the slope of this graph is equal to L times B. We want to find the magnetic field strength. B is equal to the slope over the length of wire. So whatever Google Sheets spat out for you for the slope of the graph, divide it by whatever the length of the wire you used in meters, okay, in meters, and that's going to give you the magnetic field strength. Got it? You're going to do something very, very similar again, because you did two trials here, two experiments here, right? More than two trials, two different experiments. But this time, your graph is going to be force versus wire length. You're once again going to get a straight line for this. You're going to once again get a slope. Then you're going to go through a similar analysis to what I just told you for the first graph. I'm not going to go through that for you, though, okay? You're going to figure that one out on your own. Okay, a reminder, though, that it involves y equals mx plus b, because it's a straight line. b is 0. Okay, you replace y with whatever's on the y-axis, x with whatever's on the x-axis, and then get an equation from your data sheet, which you can probably right now figure out which equation it's going to be. Do the same thing as we did right here. Cross off things that appear in both, and then you end up with slope is equal to something. Once again, in this one, you're going to find the value. You're going to find the value of the magnetic field strength. Good. You got two magnetic field strengths for the same magnet, right? What do you think you're going to do with those two magnetic fields? Take a guess. No. Yeah, actually, sorry, sorry, yeah. I was thinking of something else. I was thinking of another, something else I'm doing with another class here. Um, yes, that's exactly what you're going to do, is average them. It's exactly what you're going to do is average them out. So um, they should be really close together, right? They should be really close together. Um, and you know what? This lab tends to work out very, very well. If they're not really close together, you've made a mistake. Okay. Now, odds are, we're talking about bar magnets here. Odds are you're not going to get a magnetic field strength of 10 to the minus 5, right? That's too weak. You're not going to get a magnetic field strength of 10 to the positive 1. That's too strong. You should get two of them that are relatively close to each other, average them out, and then give me a conclusion that tells me what the magnetic field strength of these magnets are, of these horseshoe magnets are. And then, of course, along with that go sources of air. What do you got to hand in? Your data tables, two of them. Your analysis tables, two of them, your graphs, and then the analysis that goes with the graphs, your conclusion, and your sources of error.